This is my 2008 S2000 with the LHT Turbo Kit on. We're taking it off and building something a little different. If you didn't see the build on this car, I'll link it in the description. But it is a turbo kit that we built to be as stealth OEM plus as possible. And when I said OEM look, we even used the OEM airbox. It has a full titanium exhaust, so it's a little different. This side here is a dedicated three inch exhaust through a high flow cat, through a resonator into a three inch exhaust with a boost activated valve. This is the muffler it's running on until it goes into boost. But let's get some sound clips first, then you see what it's all about. has an FX300 that's been in there for about 2,000 miles and an ultralight flywheel, which we're actually making some changes. And I'm gonna show you that, describe this in a minute. But let's get some sound clips and we'll talk about that clutch next. Even when it goes into boost, it's actually quieter than I was originally wanting, but it's a kind of a nice quiet sound if you're daily in this car. So my plan is to build an NA Plus build, a custom long tube header, Ram Air airbox, different gear ratio, and of course a lightweight titanium exhaust to not only make power, but to make it more fun and engaging to drive. Basically the reversion chamber right there, which is how the factory system is, and it's in the same spot as the factory. Then we have a pretty large three inch in and out resonator, and as you see, dedicated into the three inch muffler right there. The ceramic coated black, with the boost activated valve right there. So that just has a boost tube going to the front. One of the amazing things about titanium is it's so light. Try and do that with your stainless exhaust. You can see how we did the whole inner cooler and oil cooler right here. So this is in an open spot where it can help radiate heat. If you was to do track work, then you'd put scoops behind it to force air across that. Or oil filter relocation here. We've done this in the past, but it sits right here in this panel. So it's much, much easier to do an oil change, plus it's cleaner. The oil drains right through that hole into your bucket. Pretty much the whole turbo kit is off now. Everything bolts on and unbolts. We don't cut or drill or change anything in any way, apart from the plastics. Well, even these bolts here, we utilize factory bolts for our brackets. That way, it can be removed and reinstalled and the car is back to normal. The set is capable for 660 brake horsepower, I don't know, maybe it's possible in the right motor. I think four to 450 is perfect for an S2000 because it gives it a lot of spool, a lot of mid-range. We're gonna see what the clutch looks like. So it's 2000 miles with 400 horsepower, 300 foot-pounds. So I wanna talk about the clutch here in a minute once we get it out. I just wanna confirm it doesn't look bad. This is the FX300. This is still our favorite clutch just because it has the least amount of pedal pressure and it's not putting a lot of hydraulic pressure on there as well as side load. This is the flyway we used to use, let me find the name right here. We used to use this lightweight clutch masses flywheel, but we found it has more chatter problems and it makes more noise. I feel like the lighter flywheels produce more noise. It's uh, kind of like an echo effect. The AP2s are the quietest flywheels with any of the clutch packages. Uh, our favorite combo is still the AP1 flywheel because it's the best combination between a lightweight flywheel and it helps dull some of the sound. Uh, springs are still tight. Some of the problems that you get with a lot of clutches, but the FX300, we've seen it too, is these springs will often be a little bit loose and you get a little bit of clutch buzz. Uh, these springs are tight. Well, this is often from banging the gears. You loosen the spring because this part is turning separately to this, hence why it has the spring. So I just put a new uh, Nachi bearing in there. Uh, just did a fresh surface on this with our cut on it, which helps the disc break in. You should still break it in. Organic discs take less time to break in than the Clutch Masters, which is a carbon Kevlar. It takes a good thousand miles to break those discs in. But this is, again, our favorite flywheel, the least compromise, gives it a little bit quicker throttle response. But again, the dingy sound coming from this, and it sounds a little bit the thicker the material, the less it echoes that sound. And it's something we've noticed over the last 20 plus years of working on S2000s. Good old OEM clutch. This is the disc, this is the pressure plate. Yeah, there's a lot of clutches that look just like it. 
this is in my opinion is still the best the only limitation to this is horsepower it's still the best option i think i showed you these wheels on past videos these are the meter ms10 and they're an inch wider than the factory ones and there's still no rubbing let me show you the in a fender well here just replaced them with some fresh ones that are not cut this is the part that will usually get ripped off where the tabs are as you see they're perfect all the way around all the holes are still there same on the other one everything is intact so the wheels are not rubbing anywhere everything is good this is the back right here and as you see even the rubber is intact so you didn't get to see that, but this rubber all the way on the inside, it's still all there. It's not flattened anyway. No car is susceptible to this foam failing. This is with, I believe, 19,000 miles in 2008, and clearly this foam is deteriorated. So this may be the newest one that I've taken one out of that is actually completely deteriorated. I'm not sure, but... uh. It's a fairly new car and it's uh it's gone it needs to come out it's it's just gonna come out in pieces like all of them do coming out uh, a little bit bigger pieces but it's still just sticky and gross so we'll take this out and we'll get a new one put in here so this is a 2023 model with zero miles it's nice and puffy this is a 2008 model with 20,000 miles. That's not very good. There's the foam in, nice and uh, squishy. Fits perfectly. And now it'll uh, dampen the sound and the heat. I'm gonna use my car to build another turbo kit for next year, something based on the one we just took off. We built a custom header for the S2000 in around 2009, 2010, it was based on header designs I've seen and header designs I've built. And I've mentioned this header. We're gonna build another titanium exhaust, again for weight. I did the airbox mod a long time ago, but build a ram air effect into the box. Again, something that I've talked about, and it's the kind of thing I think about when I lay down to go to bed. My brain doesn't stop. I'm constantly thinking of other things. If you watch Putty Daddy's channel, you've seen he has put that picture up. It's a blue and white diff. Well, it's a 440 gear ratio, and it's to basically make the gears a little bit shorter. Making the gears shorter makes the car accelerate faster. It doesn't exactly dyno any different, but the car feels noticeably faster. I was thinking of building a scoop in here somehow, but the problem of getting a hose around there without cutting all the plastics and getting it into the airbox were pretty limited. I didn't want to cut that out. This obviously is a repainted bumper. It's fresh paint, but I didn't want to cut that out because then we need to cut that out. And unless there's something back there, all you're doing is pushing air in that area that's not needed. My idea here is right now plastic. This is pretty much our template. We're doing an inch of a scoop right here. So when you bend this into shape, it's going to be like that. Kind of like a little ramp. And then we will rivet that to the plastic cover. A little bit of air being drawn in there. So this is the lowest portion right here, which a lot of people use to jack up. This smooth section right here, thinking something about there. This is the finished piece right here. So I welded those edges just to give it a little bit more strength. I scored it with an angle grinder, but when I bent it, it looked like it was having some fine cracks. So that's how it's gonna go. This is basically the idea of the airbox. In the bottom, we're gonna build a little tube right here. This is gonna be like brake duct hose, something flexible. This is our scoop right here. This is gonna be a manifold. I'm gonna try and build something or find something to do that. Basically, we're just channeling the air into this manifold and then forcing it in the box. So one of the concerns would be water, which you don't wanna run into anyway, but also just splashing water. The filter is gonna be around here. This would be where the divider is in the box where we do our air box mod, we check that divider out to make the box larger. So what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be the filter right here. This will come in this side of the filter. This is our arm. 
This is a box that I had for a while. It's got the air box mod. Basically, it just takes this piece out. This is the incoming air, which some of it is available here. We want to false air into this bottom, basically in this section right here. Our little diverter plate is going to go over here. So if water does come in, it gets basically bounces off here. The water drops out and it will run back through a drain somewhere in here. This is still going to get the it's not going to be quite pressurized. I might do a test, but I don't think we're going to get any kind of pressurized air, even at 100 miles an hour. Uh, I remember seeing an article where they did 100 miles an hour with a four inch scoop and they got less than one pound of boost. And that was with a sealed box. This isn't exactly sealed. All we're trying to do is flood the box with fresh air. So kind of the inspiration here is going to be the Integra Type R slash Civic Type R field, not the new school Civic Type R, but the old school with a nice high revving, light, agile, quick responding gears, gears close together, feeling like the car is excited to rev. I just modified this. It's basically a, a vacuum piece. I got it from Home Depot for 11 bucks. I cut the sides down. That was the idea, was to put that over our scoop, but it's, by the time I chopped it up and heated it and bent the ends, it's too small. This needs to be a little bit bigger of a metaphor. So I think we're gonna make one. This is designed to fit over here. We're gonna cut the plastic out and that is gonna fit over it. This is our scoop right here. This is our manifold. So it's basically gonna get the air from that scoop and push it into the air box. This will bolt over the plastic. We'll probably rivet it and then maybe uh, seal it with some silicone. It doesn't need to be airtight. It just kind of gives us an idea. And this simulates the air, right? <laughs> more scientific than that no that is that's it the only thing missing is a lab coat and a clipboard with a bunch of scientific numbers on that nobody can identify actually works better than i expected this is how the filter goes this is where the diverter plate would go problem is right behind here there's very little room because of the main fan the main fan is a thicker fan typically we put slimline fans on here but we're trying to make this friendly for anybody that doesn't have slimline fans and honestly unless you're boosting you really don't need it these fans work very well this is typically what we do is we block off that hole right there which is basically a resonator this box all it does is take up some of the noise from the intake uh, the intake this is a little box that we basically glue a piece on there just because we don't want any sound going in there and it helps make the intake sound a little bit a little bit crisper I'm thinking of bringing our tube into the bottom of this and cutting this whole section out. So this will act like a water catch, but it'll shove air in this box, which is what I'm looking for. So you've never seen inside one of these, I'm gonna start cutting around here, uh, basically make these two cavities one, and then drill a hole at the bottom for our tube to go. See, as you see, we've got plenty of room on this side. We can go into the bottom of this box we're just gonna cut this through and see what it looks like. Just cutting a hole in there and pushing that through, you can see what it looks like. It's just got a huge cavity in here. So I'm gonna cut this all the way up here, basically keep that shape. That way all the air come through here into our main box. You can see where the manifold goes right there, right above it. And then the scoop is gonna go in this spot right here and bolt to it. So we've basically got this much air that we're gonna scoop and push in there. That will come here. There is our piece for the airbox. It's not gonna be a finished piece, so we didn't spend a lot of time on it. It's gonna be 3D printed also. That's gonna to mount to the box there, so it's coming straight down. It's gonna supply air into that cavity, which is gonna be not pressurizing the box, but definitely filling the box full of cold air. This whole area is gonna be cold. So one thing that's interesting, we did relocate it for the intercooler but right there on the 06 and ups, there is a temp sensor and it's just a little gauge on the dash. Might be interesting to 
extend those wires and run it into the box to get some data before and after with this tube, see how effective it is. If you like this kind of thing, do me a favor, hit the subscribe and hit the like, hit the share, and we'll show more of it. Now, don't forget, leave a comment, let me know what you're thinking. So I remember when the S2000 first came out in 1999, I remember seeing this dash and thinking it was very cool, very futuristic. This is the AP2 dash. The AP1 is very similar, a little bit different on the temp and the gas gauge, but overall a very similar kind of look. So there is a product by a company called ID4 Motion. They make a replacement dash for the S2000. It's a gauge cluster. You take your cluster out and you put theirs in and it's a whole new panel. Well, I've been kind of following this product for a couple of years, and there isn't really any good videos on it, I don't think. Nobody's really done, like, a true side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, one of my concerns was the tech, if it is exactly in sync with the engine. I don't know if you've ever driven one of the old Porsches or the old Volkswagens, where you rev it, and the tech isn't exactly connected to the engine. It, it kind of flops around. It just feels weird. The, the Japanese stuff, to me, is very precise. That tack being exactly in sync with the engine is really important, and I think if it's behind, it would really bother me. Also, the gauge cluster is customizable. There isn't really any good video showing you all the different things that it does and how it looks in different lights. And more importantly, how does it fit? It's one of those things that you look at every day. If the, ga if the dash doesn't quite line up, if there's gaps, if it looks crooked, it, it would be one of those things that I know would bother me and some of you guys too. It's something you look at every day. It's going to have to be perfect. So that will be on a future video if we can get one of these things and show you exactly the before and after. This will actually bend on itself and because it has a wire frame all the way through there, it won't collapse. So for some reason, if you have to do one of these numbers, it's almost like a fiberglass lining. It looks nice. It's a black hose and it's got like a nylon around it. It looks like a like a nylon string. It's kind of weird because it always cuts like this. You're going to cut it here and then just taper it down. It's not going to be absolutely perfect, but it'll get you kind of close and it'll be enough to get a clamp on it and look pretty reasonable. There's a bunch of them out there. This stuff is a good quality material. We've used this a lot in the past. It's cheap. I think this was like 28 bucks for three feet. Here we have the new diff. So guys, hopefully you're gonna tune in for episode two. We're gonna show you the Tycon muffler. They now offer end plates so you can cut those down and get them to fit in those tight spots while keeping the largest muffler available. Then we get our 3D printed parts from the prototype scoops and manifold for the air box, the Ram Air. And then of course, the next thing is gonna be that custom header. It's a long, long header, steps design, pretty unique. And then of course, we get the potty mod diff installed and put fluid in. So this next episode coming up, you're gonna see the completed build and see the before and after results. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.